it was... I had my reservations about the end of the show. Lesnar was not... Well, Lesnar was originally um, said to be there, and then nobody talked about it. Right. And it was going to be just Goldberg, and nobody knew The Undertaker was going to be there. So Goldberg's cutting this promo. Heyman comes out to save him from ruining it any further. Out comes Brock Lesnar. They get in the ring, face off. Lights go out. Gong hits, and Undertaker pops up. It was a cool moment. Don't get me wrong. But I, I'm going to be that guy. I just once again take issue with you have three guys who wrestle a total of six, seven times a year tops between them as you know the main event, main attraction going into a Royal Rumble. That's a pretty star-studded event, and there's a lot of you know a lot of talent in there. But you got three guys who probably between the three of them, I would say they're 140, 138 years old. So <laughs> I don't know. I was uh, I don't know, man. I don't know what to think about it. I don't know. I mean, it's fine. I guess, like you said, it's all part timers. I don't. Yeah, it's. They should have some regular guys in there that are favorites. I don't know who those guys would be right now. I'm, I'm sure that there are some, but they're, they positioned these three guys as the main favorites from the Raw side um, going to the Rumble, and, and they're all guys that rarely ever appear on the show. I would have loved to see, you know, maybe like um, I, I, who. You know, they they all have kind of heat with each other. You know, there's no, uh, aside from who else, maybe Braun Strowman. He's out there, but who? Well, Rollins should be up there, but now he's not in the match anymore. So who's, what's he doing at Royal Rumble? Nothing, as far as I know. That makes right? sense. He's got no, he's got no, but no, uh, no match booked, no angle. He's not in the match, in the Rumble match itself. So, yeah, as far as I know, he's got nothing doing. I'm not even going to rate Raw this week. No, it's fine. No. SmackDown, uh, I... <laughs> I don't, I'm trying not to curse, trying not to curse. Uh, SmackDown started off really good. I love the uh, Randy Orton, Luke Harper match, good match between them. Fine. I like Luke Harper getting some time to work. Uh, Randy Orton finished up with the RKO. He won pretty clean. And um, Bray Wyatt was right down the middle. You know, he, uh, he, he made sure everything was fair, everything was even, but... Obviously, this is still going to lead into Randy Orton's turn, but they're they're doing a good job so far. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess it's it's interesting the directions they're taking it. Uh, almost where Wyatt and Orton seem to be siding with each other, um, which you would have thought, you know, like and like Harper kind of being left out of the loop. Um, you know, he lost here, and then why well, you said Wyatt attacked Harper afterwards and gave him the sister Abigail. So um, it's interesting to see where it's going. I think everyone thinks the end game is Orton versus Wyatt in some capacity. You know, come WrestleMania, so we'll see how they uh, they work to get there. All those guys are in the Rumble on Sunday, um, so we'll see if what kind of interaction or what kind oh, of that's stuff a they do. Really good point. I, f- I forgot about that too. Um, something else, pretty. Mickey James was revealed last week to be La Luchadora. Uh, I think that's Spanish for the masked wrestler. Um, and uh, she cut a promo this week. I got to be honest with you, I didn't watch a promo. Did you watch it? Uh, yeah, I did. I did. Um, it was just more like she played it off like Alexa Bliss was the only one who uh, respected her and like all these uh, women's wrestlers now are kind of playing up how they're revolutionizing the women's wrestling and and uh, how they kind of forgot about when are neglecting all the, the ones that came before them, uh, I think. And like Mickey James mentioned that she was part of that and she's... I don't know, five or six time women's champion, Divas slash Divas champion, and all this type of stuff. So that was that was kind of to explain her alliance with Alexa Bliss that she, uh, you know, sided with her in that respect. But um, you know, Becky Lynch just came out and they had a brawl and they they beat her down. Um, What's the match on Sunday? Yeah, there's a six women tag match. It's uh, Mickey faces G- versus heels, right? Yeah, it's Mickey James, Alexa Bliss, and Natalia. Versus Becky Lynch, Nikki Bella, and why am I forgetting who the third woman is on the babyface side? Becky Lynch, Nikki Bella, and Naomi. And Naomi, right, because she came back. I have a couple of issues with the segment. Um, Alexa Bliss is your champion. Right. She is thrown in a meaningless six-woman tag match, which is a typical New Japan pro wrestling, get a bunch of faces on one side, get a bunch of heels on the other side, and have a decent little match. The Royal Rumble is four hours long. Mm -hmm. The pre-show is two hours long. You're telling me you couldn't have squeezed in 
Nikki versus Natalia and Alexa versus I don't care even Naomi to have some semblance of you know of importance behind the women's title I I don't know it just seems a little uh, it seems very lazy to me I'm sure they're probably only going to get eight or nine minutes tops you know but you have four you have six hours of television six hours yeah the rumble match will take up one hour fine so you have five hours. I don't know. I, I wouldn't. I. It just makes it seem so unimportant, you know. I think that it would have been rushed though a little bit, right? Like some of the stuff, like uh, like they just established like a thing with Naomi, like she just came back this week, right? So to to throw her into a match with uh, Alexa right away or something for the women's title, I don't. I think that would have been too quick. And then fine, they, give it Becky again. Well, they they kind of I think that's kind of ran its course, right? Like they ended it with the cage, like that. That was it. Now if they wanted to do that, they could have saved the save the cage match for the pay per view. True. And had they could stretch that out. Um, for whatever reason, they decided to to you know move it, bump it up a week or two, and put it on SmackDown. So I could have seen that. Um, I think once they did the cage match and they did the big reveal, that that probably I think what it ends up doing is it sections off like Mickey to work with Becky, probably Alexa will work with Naomi, and Nikki and Natalia are still doing their thing. And I don't know how it's going to wind up at WrestleMania if they're going to have like a multi person match or whatever it is. Um, I'm assuming most of those. You know, women will be involved in that once it comes time. So I don't know if they're gonna. What about even Becky one. versus Mickey James then? Yeah, they they could do that, that too. I don't know what we. I don't know what their plan is. I guess that's the thing. Just, yeah, I hear you. Plan. I just don't like the idea of a champion on one of the biggest cards of the year being tucked away in a six person tag. Is that well? I guess I'll do you one worse and say like American Alpha doesn't even have a match or a feud on the show. And as far as I know, they're not. Who's even, American Alpha? Yeah, so they're not, they don't have a match. I don't think they have a feud right now, and I don't think they're in the Rumble yet, as far as I know, right? Unless they were added, and I missed it. I th- thought they were added, but I could totally be wrong. I it could be. They're on the poster, right? Uh, they might be. Yeah, I, I think they're on I the poster. Know. I saw that there was 22 names added for the Rumble, right? So I don't know. Uh, actually, I guess I could look really quick and see who the confirmed competitors are. American Alpha. Nope, no American Alpha. Right, so... Uh, yes, yeah, so they're not on the, they don't have anything at all, which is well, depressing. Speaking about treating your champions well, let's just quickly talk about this segment because it's gonna get it's gonna get me angry. Uh, well, we could talk about the battle for the rumble spot. I like the fact that Mojo Rawley won this. I think uh, you know a lot of times when your tag team partner gets injured, you, you, they gotta kind of call an audible, and Mojo probably looked better than I've ever seen him. He didn't do a lot of the 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 weak like uh, ass spots, if you will. You know, mm-hmm. he didn't do a lot of that, and he looked uh, he looked motivated, and he but he looked intense. You know, it wasn't just like oh, Mojo Raleigh was like oh, I'm trying to win. You know, he looked uh, he had a little bit of a mean streak to him. And I, I thought it was uh, it was good. It established him, and uh, when you look at the people that are in it, Void Villains, Ascension, Kurt Hawkins, Breeze, Fandango, Mojo, Rhino, and Slater, like he's the clear winner in that one. So. Hopefully he gets a decent little showing. Mojo's been in developmental for man, that guy's been there for a while. So, but anyway, let's get to. Uh, so there was an issue with Good Morning America. John Cena was on, and he didn't even say AJ's name, and he called him the guy, uh, the guy from Georgia. Is that what he said? The guy from the guy Atlanta. from Atlanta, guy from Georgia, something guy from like Atlanta. That. He pretty much doo dooed. Is that better? Yeah. He doo dooed all over AJ Styles and all over the title because he. He is, you know, AJ's the champion, but there's a, you know, he didn't do AJ any favors talking about him, and he, they had this whole uh, little back and forth where Cena said, what he couldn't, AJ said he couldn't make it on the Indies, and Cena was like, I didn't have to, something along those lines. Something like that. And, you know, this, the segment was really geared towards, I guess, the smart fans, right? He, where it was pretty much John Cena cutting a promo on all, all the smart fans. But... And the same time of cutting the promo on the smart fans, I don't think anybody mentioned the title. I don't remember the title being brought up once. Uh, it made AJ look like a little bit of a buster. You know, he kind of... he, And then, as per usual, John Cena got the last word in the promo. Who's the heel and who's the face? Like, that's the part that I don't understand. John Cena comes out and he's like belittling the champion. And in a match, when oh, a heel wrestles a face... The heel is supposed to get heat, you know, by getting over on the face. And this is, you have like this, 
I guess a re- reversal of roles. I I don't know who who's the good guy and who's the bad guy because the entire time it was just John Cena like verbally. But he was like the Stephanie McMahon to Mick Foley when that ring with AJ, and it it doesn't make any sense. And for him to say those things he did about AJ is like I don't know. There, there's a way of I guess building anticipation for a match and building heat, and there's an, another way of like just I get neutering another guy, and that's what they've done to AJ. Yeah, I think also it came up in one of the recaps I read where you know when you when you cut a guy down like that, um, like verbally, in in the promos, you know it's like and then even even if you beat him on Sunday, it's like well then what did you you know like if you basically talk the guy down and be like well you know you're not really you know a main event guy or you're not really that as good as whatever that type of stuff and then he beats him it's like well, well what did you, you know you didn't really beat anybody that great then i guess huh and like and then how good are you then if you had you know what i mean it's like it's if really you can't beat the guy who sucks yeah right like i would rather you say like well listen you're, you know, you're a great wrestler you've done a lot of great things you beat all these guys you're on a great streak right now but i'm i'm just that much better than you and i'll beat you on sunday and, we'll and as happens, johnny good guy john cena that's what he's supposed to do right right rise above hate you know like overcome bullying and all that stuff it was just I I didn't like the segment and I didn't like what it did for the title. It's it's always supposed to be about the title, right? Isn't the title means you're the best? It's supposed to. I don't know. If if the roles were reversed and and Cena was the champion and AJ's cutting that promo on him, it's fine because he's saying you know he's doing what a heel does. He's that would be like Miz one on one, but it doesn't make sense because now it's like you don't know who to root for because pretty much he just bullied that guy for ten minutes in the ring. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's confusing. I'm I was worried. We'll see. I guess when we do the prediction. Yeah, so we're I'm, I'm real worried. It's gonna be a really be a dark poopy day. poopy Monday morning. Uh, Dolph Ziggler destroyed Kalisto, and that's fine because I think they're trying to reestablish Dolph Ziggler as like a tough guy, and I, I don't hate it. Talk to me about Dean Ambrose, buddy. Talk to me about the main event. Tell me it was a good match. No. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say a couple things. I'm gonna say one thing, and we can stop talking about it. What I like about Dean Ambrose. And I don't think I've ever seen anybody kick out of dirty deeds. Have you? That you can uh, run off the top of your head. Off the top of my head, I can't remember. It's not an it's not an attitude adjustment. It, it seems like it's the only thing. I, it's, I forget where I read that. Somebody had brought that up, but it's the only finisher that nobody really kicks out of. It's like a real, real finisher. And and I do like that about the, they, the way they protected it. And I will say I really don't usually like lumberjack matches. I think they're kind of weak. But I think the Miz and... Dean Ambrose, two guys I've given a lot of credit to recently, you know, continue to put on a good match. Yeah, at least they utilize the lumberjacks in some capacity, um, you know, with trying to throw the other guy outside the ring and, and all that stuff. But, uh, and I think they kind of, they threw Corbin into the mix a little bit towards the end, right? Yep. So, I don't know if they're setting anything up with him and Ambrose or not, but uh, he kind of got involved. But Ambrose ended up pertaining. It was about a 12-minute long match. It was, you know, it was fine. It's like just about what they would normally do for a TV a TV main event. So um, we'll see. You know, obviously a much more watchable show that SmackDown is than Raw. Um, so it was it was solid going into the pay-per-view on Sunday. Uh, bef- but before we get to the pay-per-view on Sunday, we have our NXT TakeOver predictions. But before we get to NXT TakeOver, we have a couple of seconds from a word for our sponsor. This is former WWE superstar Damian Sandow, now known as Aaron Stevens, and you're listening to Damage 365 Radio. Keep it tuned. You're welcome. Gets me every time with the you're welcome. Gets me. (laughs) So, uh, Saturday night, right before the Royal Rumble, this is a huge show. Uh, NXT TakeOver uh, San Andreas, right? Like the video game? Uh, no, it's uh, San Antonio, Texas. Yes. Grand Theft Auto. A new name is NXT TakeOver Grand Theft Auto. So last year, I f- forgive me, I don't know what the card was for the TakeOver, but usually, I mean, it kind of, it, it gives you kind of hint what's going to happen on, you know, Royal Rumble, because we have some, we have uh, eight, oh, say 22, so there's eight unannounced spots. Yes. So who knows who's coming in? Maybe it's going to be Nakamura. Maybe it's going to be Samoa Joe. Maybe it's going to be Peyton Royce. Who knows? Like Beth Phoenix treatment. Yeah. She could make out the great Kali, who goes under Jindip Singh now. Mm. I got a thing for um, email bookings for him. Oh. He's uh, he's going to be on the show next week. What show? This show? Yeah. Oh. I contacted him. He's guest hosting with you? <laughs> yeah, we're going to interview you, Joe. Um, so, on paper, 
This card doesn't look to be as strong on paper as some of the more recent NXT cards. I think that's fair to say. I mean, NXT is kind of at an influx right now.